What's good YouTube? So today I am working on this Can-Am. It's a 2019 and I'm doing the brakes. And I'm going to show you guys how to remove these Torx bolts. Most of the time if you don't heat them up, they break or they strip. Uh, I do have Torx sockets. But they're in the garage and I don't feel like going to grab them. So I've been using this handheld one. I just heat it up, apply a little pressure and it breaks loose. So we'll try it on this side. I am using the EBC brakes. And I'll show you guys the ones I'm using. So I got a little torch. There we go. I'm not a professional at using these torches. So if I light it wrong, don't blame me. Some people use inductors, they're kind of pricey, I don't have one, so I use the torch. Just heat it up a little bit, maybe like 10-15 seconds. They come with a Loctite that if you don't apply heat, it won't come off. So a little bit of, there we go, and it's broken loose. If you don't do it this way, you're, you will strip them. Apply a little bit of heat on the bottom one. There we go. A little bit of pressure. And it's not budging, so I'm going to heat it up a little bit more. It shouldn't require too much pressure before it breaks loose. Try that again. It's going, it's a little stuck though. Let me heat it up. Kind of scary. Although I did buy, just in case, some bits for if it was to strip. So I did the rear brakes. It is coming loose. It was just pretty stuck still. So if the handheld works, for sure the Torx sockets would work too. And they won't fully come out just yet. So that's just to get them loose. You're gonna need a size 15 socket for two bolts on the caliper. And it's hot, so be careful. You gotta be careful because I don't have the, the Can-Am on top of jack stands it's holding up just on my jack there we go now we're safe So these bolts also have Loctite, so they're a little bit hard to remove. So I did a lot of work on this X3. I did the rear bearings. I did new axles. And what was the other thing? Oh, the brakes. So depending on how you feel about the rotor, 
This one still has plenty of life. You can go ahead and replace with new rotors. Well, I'm gonna let it cool off and I'll be right back. Let me go grab the brakes. All right, I'm back. So these are the ones I'm replacing with. They're the EBC brakes, high performance. Heard a lot of good things about them. They're not the cheapest. They have a few different ones. There's some more expensive as well. But a lot of good reviews on these. And check the part numbers here. Uh, they're basically the same brake, but they're, what do you call it, like directional. So one's a right side, one's a left side. And I won't know which one until I remove it and see which one looks like which one. But let's get going. So in order to remove these pins to allow the brakes to come off, you kind of have to push the brake up a little bit. It's still kind of hot. Let's see if I can do this. Let me grab a little rag. It's just about sundown, so I'm trying to beat the light. So I turn it and it comes off. There's one pin, and if you like, they do sell replacement pins that are Allen heads instead of Torx bolts. Let's see. This one's not completely loose. So you pretty much push the brake up and it releases. But it's so hot. If I can pull it with some pliers. There we go. Got it. It's pretty hot. That's why I couldn't get it. Here comes the first break. And the other one I'm going to leave on there. And get my little seat clamp. And... As long as you haven't refilled your brake fluid, you should be able to just to push the the what do you call it? I can't think of the name, but you should be able to just to leave one of the brakes on there. If you don't plan on reusing this one, put the seat clamp on it and tighten it so it pushes it in. So that's about how much it'll go. Now we can release it. There we go. And let's get that brake pad out. Let's get a little bit of our brake fluid. And just spray it, spray it down. So let's see. So this part number is for the passenger side, and this part 
number is going to be for the driver's side. So another thing I like to do is back here, this black plate should easily pull. I don't know if you could see that. It moves. So what you do is there's a little rubber back here. You just detach it from the little bolt. All you do is pull it. And it'll detach. And then once it's detached, it should pop right off. So what I do, I clean these. I clean them and then I just re-grease them. I'll go ahead and clean them. A little bit of brake fluid. Well, I'm doing this fast. Usually I'm more a little bit more detailed, but apply a little bit of grease on here. Doesn't have to be a whole lot. And then you just place it back. This way. Place it back. You push it all the way in, and those little rubber things should uh, attach on the by themselves. If they don't, just mess with it a little bit. And. I know it's hard to see, but let me put the flash on. So they're right there. That's where they attach. All you do is there's a little guide there where it sticks and it stays. And that's that part. Make sure it's pumping right. And it is. We'll get our first break. Try not to get grease on these. Oh, this way. And you push them up. And then you get your pins. If you're going to replace them, now's the time. What I do, I know they come with Loctite, but... I don't think these would ever pop off. They can, but i rather just put a little bit of anti-seize, make it a little easier. Next time they have to come off. And then, where's our little tool? Dun, dun, dun. Here it is. So I'm going to tighten this. And you don't want these really tight. Just until they, they go. So, right there. Push on it a little bit before you start putting them on. And this is going to work or be the same in all four sides. So now we can go ahead and place it back.
So you could always apply some new Loctite. It does come with some. For this video, I won't be applying any. Just so I can show you guys how to put it back together. So all you do is just align the two points where your bolts will go. And then you just torque these to spec and we're done. Like I said, this was just a quick video. Uh, I didn't want it to get too dark. I still have to do one more side, but I'll probably just finish it tomorrow. So for now, hand tight, and then I'll go look for the specs, and I'll tighten it to, to the torque specs. But yeah, that's how it is. I'm not a fan of the wheel spacers, but then again, it's not my car, so there you have it, EBC brakes. Let me show you the back. So new axles. New brakes and wheel bearings. Axles, brakes and wheel bearings. And it should be back on the road here shortly. Get it ready for the weekend. The tool I used for the wheel bearings was this Super ATV. It doesn't come with instructions, so you kind of have to figure it out. I didn't do a video on it. Uh, if I ever had to do it again, I will. It was just too hot out here to be <laughs> to be filming. These were the old wheel bearings they are trashed axle boxes one of the axles was broken I had already replaced it but we had went with a used one and it broke again so now we put two new ones on there and then if you do have to bleed it it's like bleeding a car so usually you'll require someone else's help unless you have the correct bleeding tools so if you are doing your brakes to fill up your brake fluid it's in here you pop this cover off right in the center and they're both right here so you're gonna need some Phillips head screwdriver and that's where they go if you have a windshield it's it's gonna be it's gonna be kind of hard to fill them so you'll probably need a cone with an extension a flexible tube or something to fill them up but this is where they're at they're really dusty so this one's filled up this one could use a little bit but if I was to open these or before I even open these I would clean all the debris in here so yeah just want to let you guys know where that's at it's inside the cab under that cover.